we're constantly in a rush after a long day at work. And we don't want to be in the kitchen for hours making supper. Or at least I know that was my story. But that doesn't mean that we don't want to have a delicious, tasty meal. It just means that we want it to be, to be quick. Processed foods are an extremely helpful, easy way to get supper on the table quickly. I mean, honestly, a pizza, ribs, or even burger and fries can be thrown in the oven and then they're on the table in less than an hour. These aren't the time consuming from scratch meals my mother was making. They're quick and easy ways to fill us up and they're delicious. But can I say that I wish I didn't have to cook like ever at all? I actually hate cooking. When I first started working, I didn't have your typical nine to five. I worked for the government and I was a frontline worker. I was supposed to start work at nine at the office or 8.30 if I had to go to court. And those times don't sound too bad, except to get to my office from where I lived was an hour in traffic. To get to court from where I live, 45 minutes, with a half an hour of looking for parking because we're close to the courthouse and we're in a busy part of town. Now on the flip side, the good part about going into court was that typically I'd finish work around five because judges, they don't work past five o'clock. So a huge part of being a frontline worker is that I have to work with parents which if I haven't mentioned yet, I was working in youth protection. So parents typically work nine to five. I'm trying to work nine to five. Those schedules don't match. So in fact, my nine to five job really was more like a nine to nine job. Fresh out of school, single, lots of energy. I did that job for many years. I would say far too many. My typical daily routine was dragging myself out of bed at seven, 15 after snoozing a million times, rushing off to work, driving through a drive through and grabbing a muffin and hot chocolate for breakfast, oatmeal, because that's healthy, paperwork all morning long. Lunchtime, I would have an amazing meal with colleagues. My favorite thing to have was breakfast for lunch, followed closely by pizza for lunch. And, you know, if I was trying to be more health conscious, which three out of five days we would, I would have either a Caribbean meal, Greek meal, or Chinese meal. We made it a point to eat a meal at lunch because we knew we're going to be working late into the evening. By the time my day ended at around nine ish, I was exhausted, but luckily for me, still living at home, I'd get home and my mom would have left me my first home cooked meal of the day, which I was able to have somewhere around nine 30. So let's fast forward to a year after my daughter was born. I'm back to this horrible, hectic schedule. And by the time I got home, all I wanted to do was cuddle with my baby. Food was so not a priority to me, but I also wasn't a kid anymore. And I really needed to pay attention to the budget. I couldn't just eat out every single meal. So this actually meant cooking <laughs> at 930 when I got home after work. And so what that meant was that I was eating a lot of pasta, pasta and sauce, pasta and sauce. By the time my daughter was two years old, this routine was really starting to impact us. For me to have any chance of waking her up and getting her off to daycare on time, that meant that she had to be sleeping by the time I got home at night. Now, thank goodness she's the kind of kid that woke up in an amazing mood with a smile on her face because the morning was the only time i was actually getting to see her during the week but i knew that this routine like it needed to change this is not the kind of parent that i wanted to be that was not the only time that i wanted to spend with her i didn't want to feel like her her chauffeur that i was just driving her to daycare or driving her to my mom's or driving her like and it no i took a decision change my position at work. Now I was able to work nine to seven instead of nine to nine. With this new schedule, I had about an hour with my daughter every evening before needing to put her to bed, which I loved. And the thing that I still had to figure out was the cooking part of the story because I used that hour with her. So I didn't rush home and start cooking. I came home, I played with her. We did bath time. We did story time. We had a good time. And then when she was all tucked away and finally sleeping, which that's a whole other story, but it took a little while, then I would go and get myself ready for my evening which would, and eat my meal. Now, obviously I couldn't afford to eat out every meal like I used to do at the beginning of my work journey. 
So I decided to buy breakfast bars and frozen meals and manage the time issue because I was going to be making these meals somewhere between eight and nine and manage the finance because, well, they're cheaper to buy these meals than it is to order food all the time. And if I didn't feel like having one of those meals one time or, or another, then I could always order myself something. This was going to be much better for the budget and it's going to be much better in me managing my time. Now, the good thing about this is that it allowed me to, in the morning, focus on feeding Kyler her breakfast and getting her ready for her day because mine was a grab and go kind of scenario. Kyler had a daycare that made her lunch. They had a chef there. And then when she was with my mother, my mother made her lunch if she spent the day there or she made her lunch and supper. So I never really had to worry about Kyler's food. It was only ever having to worry about my food. And of course, my evenings, I got to play. Fast food and processed foods are convenient ways to have more time with your family. And that's exactly what I needed and it's exactly what I got. My daughter had a very different experience of childhood than I had. Both of my parents worked. And when my mom got home, she spent all of her time in the kitchen cooking. So we didn't have my mom's attention during the week. When she was off, my mom was a blast. She had a great sense of humor, loved to watch funny programs, and would just dance with us and fool around for, for no reason, took us outside and we would skip rope. Like it was a fun time when my mom was not working at work or in the kitchen. I didn't want to spend all of my time working and then come home and spend all of my time working and not have the opportunity to play with Kyler because I remember how amazing it was having that fun time with my mother. And I really wanted to give Kyler as much of that as I could possibly give her for years. I did not worry about cooking. I was that person in the grocery store where you look at their cart and it was boxes and, and frozen stuff and boxes maybe a little bit of fresh meat and if there i can't even i years i didn't buy a vegetable i can't even lie and say i did it didn't happen i remember when i wanted to get back into being social love my daughter but needed some adult interaction and so i joined the badminton club the badminton club met three days a week monday wednesday friday from 8 to 11. so my daughter was young that meant i could only go fridays by this point she was about like just the beginning, just in the beginning of elementary school, so seven ish or eight wellness warrior. When I tell you that I could barely make it through a few exchanges of the Babington bird before I was huffing and puffing and feeling like, whoa, I'm like so out of shape. And my first thought was, well, it's late at night and I worked all week. And of course I'm out of shape. I haven't exercised for a long time. So, you know, a few weeks from now, I'm going to be amazing. I'll be back to where I was. And then a few weeks went by and now the thought was, well, I'm only actually playing once a week. So it's going to take me longer than that. And also it's still late at night and every excuse in the book. And then summer came around and my daughter's older and she's able to ride her bike. And like, I'm not slowing down to stay in pace with her. She's actually able to ride as fast, if not faster than me. And all of a sudden, these simple activities like riding my bike with my daughter or going for walks with my daughter and she's running and I'm like trying to keep up and I'm huffing and puffing. I'm too tired on the weekend to play with her and my joints are sore from doing these simple activities with a nine-year-old. I, I had no energy <laughs> and I mean, my joints are always you know, sore from doing strenuous things. Like that's been my story since I was in my early twenties, but simple things never got me. And simple things were always normal and easy for me to do. And all of a sudden I can't keep up. I wanted to be that parent who spent quality time playing with my daughter. And now here I was with the time to play with her and I can't do it because I'm exhausted and simple activities are making me feel pain and I'm hurt and I didn't know how to solve it. At no point with the multitude of times that I went to my doctor and complained about my joints 
was I ever asked about the food that I was eating. Now, now I thought that by buying only the name brand foods and choosing the healthy, low fat versions of everything that I was buying, the heart healthy checks, and I was eating good quality food. But unfortunately, it wasn't until I could barely walk that I learned that processed foods are unhealthy. And I didn't learn that from my doctor. Like my doctor asked me to stop eating junk food, but my doctor did not explain to me that all packaged foods are junk food. So I cut down chocolate bars and cookies and ice cream and right. The, I cut down the junk food because well, I still ate them sometimes because that's normal, right? In order to solve a problem, you need to know what the problem is. My health was failing and I actually wanted to solve it, but it, it wasn't failing in a vacuum. My health was failing because I was eating unhealthy food. I thought that I needed more exercise. I thought I needed more sleep. And those are important things to get and I should have been getting them. But the reason that my body was failing, that my joints were hurting, that I was exhausted, that I couldn't keep up with a nine year old was because of all the years of eating processed, unhealthy garbage. I wanted to have more time with my daughter. And I really truly believed that processed foods would help me achieve that in a healthy way. But that wasn't true. Processed foods absolutely take less time to prepare and they taste, they taste delicious, but processed foods also cause weight gain, heart disease, diabetes, and increase your risk of cancer. And that's because processed foods and junk food are two words for the same stuff. You're going to want to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss part two of this video where I talk about what I learned about processed food that helped me to understand where all my pain and weight was actually coming from. Junk food, it, it steals time from our lives because I, I was in so much pain that I spent more time recovering from playing with my daughter than actually playing with my daughter. Cause I would do an hour at the park and then need two days for my joints to feel better. It's unfortunately the norm today that we end our lives in pain, sick with disease and taking medication. And I want you to understand that that makes processed foods very inconvenient. If you want to know what happens when you remove junk food from your diet, click on the link and I'm going to meet you over there.